Hello and welcome to a new video here on Linux Art. In this video, I want to update you on the latest news regarding Linux Mint because we do have a few updates. The new version 22.3 will actually be entering the beta phase in the coming weeks. And if the Linux Mint team is feeling ambitious, we might even see the full 22.3 release this year. If not, I assume it will drop by early January to the very latest, I would say. And now we are going to talk about all the upcoming features. This isn't final yet. I likely to do a final review video when 22.3 is out, but this is a nice sneak peek. And we also need to talk about the topic of Wayland, which is a massive point that we simply cannot ignore. Let's start with the new start menu. As you can see, the start menu is being completely adapted. Until now, it's been relatively simple. The new design is a bit more stylish as we see. It reminds me a bit more of a Mate setup or even a KDE setup in some ways. We have a new layout. So on the left, left side we have our places menu for quick access. Next to that I assume we have either a favorites or recently opened applications and then we have our categories. The list has become a bit smaller and interestingly the icons are now monochrome so they aren't colorful anymore. I find that almost a pity because the colors were quite distinct. Let me know in the comments what you think about that monochrome change here. However, on the right side, we now have more space for the individual applications, including a small description right inside the list. To be honest, I think that's a successful, well-designed feature. Also, the shutdown, lockout and lock buttons have moved to the bottom left with a newer design. I like that very much. I think it looks really chic and is quite impressive. This will be the new start menu for Linux Mint 22.3. Now let's come to another feature and this is the system information or system reports and hardware info. Generally looking at the last releases, the point three versions always bring a major graphical update. And this is also the case here as well, I would say. In Linux Mint 22.3, we are getting features that I think many of you, especially beginners, will really like. The system reports and system information tools are getting significantly more functionality. We now have the so-called new information center, which reminds me a bit of the device specifications in Windows. I don't know if you are familiar with it. It also sometimes is called the device manager, I guess. And now we have much more rather just basic system info we see here in the first screenshot. The real highlight is the sidebar as we see it here. For example, we have now a USB device manager, kind of. You can easily see which USB devices are connected to the Linux system. This is incredibly helpful. I see it all the time in Linux support where I have to quickly use the command lsusb or lspci to get the system information which hardware is installed. Now in version 22.3, this is available graphically and that's a really cool feature and that's why I like Linux Mint. They think about what is missing in the Linux Cosmos and how to bring it into their own ecosystem. There's also a GPU information section as we see it here. If you happen to have multiple graphic cards, you can see them here along with hardware acceleration support for specific renderers like OpenGL, Vulkan or video playback. And we also have a section for PCI devices. So graphic cards, sound cards, network cards, all displayed here. And if we compare this table to, for example, LSUSB or LSPCI command, this is not much more than this, but it is arranged much more beautifully. And for the normal Linux user who doesn't necessarily work in the terminal, this is a real relief in my opinion. 
So in overall, this tool has been extremely beefed up with sensible features and I personally think that are great news for our upcoming version 22.3. And then there's actually another very new tool called System Administration. There isn't much in there yet, but it contains one very good thing that has been missing in the graphical Linux Mint configuration until now. OpenSUSE used to have this in Yast but other Debian based systems didn't really have it built in. We used to have the grub customizer at some point, but that has largely been abandoned, I would say. And Linux Mint has decided to do this natively for the most important settings. You can configure your boot menu. So you can toggle whether to show the grub boot menu or not. You can set the time out countdown in seconds. And personally, I find this very cool. You can set additional boot parameters for your kernel. This means you can finally set specific kernel parameters via a GUI. I think this is great for hardware or driver configuration. It's a very sensible addition that we are finally seeing move into the graphical interface of Linux Mint. You could always configure this, of course, via text files, but never graphically. And this is a real advancement, in my opinion. Also, we got news briefly regarding LMDE. LMDE 7 was released a few months ago on October 14. Here we have the blog post. LMDE 6 is already heading into retirement and will reach end of life on January 1st, 2026. So only a few days left. So there isn't also a huge transition period. However, upgrading from 6 to 7 is relatively easy. If you want a video on that especially, let me know it into the comments and I will do a video about this. And if you don't know LMDE yet, LMDE is the Debian edition of Linux Mint, has a lot smaller user base, but uses Debian as a base instead of Ubuntu like the normal Linux Mint. And then we also have new icons. Yeah, the team is also working on new symbolic icons to replace the Advaita symbolic icons. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of constantly changing icon sets, but the team felt it was necessary. So yeah, we will see these in the also on the new start menu among other places. For example, if we look to the latest Linux Mint post here, we uh, see those monochrome icons from the X app symbolic icons initiative, which uh, yeah, was now started by the Linux Mint developers. And now, as I announced it at the start, let's talk about Wayland. All these new information about the new Linux Mint 22.3 version didn't have a single mention about Wayland. And this is personally, I would say, not a very good sign because Linux Mint is still stuck at xorg or x11. If you don't know what Wayland is, Wayland is the new display server technology making its way into Linux Mint. So far, it's only available experimentally. While the new features in 22.3 are great, indeed, I would say, things seem to be stalling on the Wayland front, which makes me a bit impatient, to be honest. Yeah, the lead developer Clem actually replied to a comment in this blog post. So if we search for Wayland, <laughs> then we come to a comment where such a question is asked, how is the current state with the Wayland session? Clem explained that for the Cinnamon edition, one major feature is missing the lock screen as we see, screen locker. It turns out building a secure lock screen that cannot be bypassed on Wayland is technically very complex, to be honest. And the developers are still stuck on implementing this properly. Because of this, he cannot guarantee that Wayland will be ready for Linux Mint 23 in even a beta version. As he says it here, because the comment asks for a only a beta version. So Linux Mint 23 is expected in the summer of next year. So yeah, June, July, August 2026. It looks like it will be launched without Wayland as the default and maybe 
if we are lucky with Wayland in a beta phase. So nothing to promise. This makes me somewhat sad, especially considering that in 2026, Xorg or X11 will be officially be considered deprecated and obsolete by many more projects. Other distros like Fedora and Ubuntu are pushing ahead. Fedora, for example, has already removed X11 sessions entirely for GNOME and KDE. Yet here on Linux Mint, we are still resting a bit in the old X11 world. And here comes my personal opinion on Wayland. I must admit, I'm still on X11 myself because there are tools I miss on Wayland, like the auto type function in KeyPass XC or for example, Xkill. It is a completely different technology and the open source world still needs to adapt for some features. However, Linux Mint is taking its time. In my opinion, from version 23 onwards, every version that still relies on X11 is one version too many. It is high time for the team to catch up. For example, one major thing we are missing out on Linux Mint because of this is the so-called Raiderate. I would have loved to make videos showing you how to easily run Android apps on Linux, but Raiderate uh, requires Wayland. For now on Linux Mint, I have to recommend it Jenny Motion, which is a proprietary software, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So what do you think? Does it bother you that Linux Mint is delaying Wayland. For the average user, it's not a disaster right now, I would say. Everything runs fine. Don't get me wrong, but X11 is almost 60 years old technology. Well, the X system is from the 80s, I guess, and structurally it is obsolete. We have to move on eventually, especially for security reasons, as X11 wasn't designed with modern security isolation in mind. As a conclusion, I would say as long Linux Mint makes the switch sometimes next year, I'd say they just barely made the curve. Overall, the new features coming in this December or January look pretty cool. Linux Mint is doing a lot of things right, in my opinion, even if they are a step behind on the display server technology. So what's your opinion about that? Please write it me into the comments if you see that similar or I'm being too harsh. Would love to hear your opinion about this. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel because here on Linux Art we're releasing new stuff about Linux and open source every week. I wish you a pleasant day and see you in the next one. Bye!